sometimes before bed i like to get a little tea and this tea right here guys i don't know there's probably different brands of it but the seracy you see it seracy tea it is an amazing tea amazing i really like it seracy on a whole and if i can get the little bush right i used to, i like to shake off the bag because sometimes it have on too much extra dust and if I can get the little bush, the thirsty bush, I would just boil up a whole pot full and put it in the fridge and drink it cold. Love it. So I just merely put this tea bag and then I'm going to let it seep. And then I'll drink my little thirsty down. I try not to drink thirsty too often because there was something about um, them saying it has do something to your liver if you if you drink it in excess so i'll just drink a little every now and then and if i'm def if i'm having a, a tummy ache i definitely draw for the thirsty before you even finish drink off the cup you better stop hurting you mm -hmm. try okay guys welcome back it is my pleasure to sit with you to talk about these things the things that are important to us especially us over the age of 50. We have to know what is going on in our bodies. We have to figure out how we can live our lives without being consumed all day with diseases and medication and you can't do what you wanna do. So on this channel, this is where we dig deep and we dive deep into these issues. So in our last episode, this is a series, and this is episode number two. In the previous episode, we talk about what is diabetes, and we asked Google what is diabetes. So if you go onto your Google, on your phone, on your laptop, on your whatever, you're gonna see a massive amount of information about what is diabetes. It is not a secret. Diabetes is not a secret, but a lot of people still don't understand what the disease is, how it is, how is it manifest, how do you manage it if you already have it, or how do you prevent it? Because type 2 diabetes is preventable, and we're going to get into all of that later in the series. We, we touched on what is type 2 diabetes. We didn't go in a lot of details, but we said type 2, you had it for a long term. It's not a one day and you feel better or you have it for a week and you drink some tea or some bush and you feel better. No, you have it for long term. But if you implement, and we didn't talk about this last time, but if you implement some lifestyle changes, and even add some medication, you can actually put type 2 diabetes to rest. We talked about type 1. That type 1 is a lifelong. This is where your pancreas is making not enough insulin. And we talked about insulin or a little bit of insulin. And we talked about the pancreas. We touched on gestational diabetes, that this is the type of diabetes that affects only females. Because it affects you. Um, it can affect you during pregnancy. It's one of the complications that can happen. And we did not touch on this other type of diabetes, pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes is when the doctor would say to you, or I would even hear people say, I just have um, a little, what, what would they say? They usually say something else. They don't call it pre-diabetes. Um, what's the other term you guys used to describe pre-diabetes? Put it in a comment. But pre-diabetes basically is, and I have another video that describes the differences between diabetes and pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes just means that you haven't gotten to that ideal number that would classify you as having full-blown diabetes. But I described in my previous video that pre-diabetes was like you were pregnant with diabetes. It's just a matter of time 
before you would give birth to diabetes she. Yes, ma'am. So if the doctor tell you you have prediabetes, you want to take it very serious. It's not something to play around with, but you because you're still, your body is still doing the same things that happen when you go into full-blown um, diabetes. Your blood vessels are getting damaged. Your, all, your, your organs are getting damaged. But I think pre-diabetes is even worse because you're not on any medication for most people. But you do, um, you can take metformin during that stage. But a lot of people with pre-diabetes are not being managed and it's just a matter of time before they develop full diabetes. So this is how I break down what is diabetes. Diabetes is a disease that can happen to anyone. Anyone can have or get diabetes. You could be a child or an adult. You can get diabetes. Now, back in the day, only adults would usually have type 2. But nowadays, they're finding that even children are getting type 2 diabetes. We talk about type 2 and type 1. Type 1 usually starts out in children. But you can also get type 1 even as an adult, like late onset of type 1. So when someone is said to have diabetes, it means that Foods that you eat, you get your meal, you eat your food, and there's sugars that are in, naturally occur in, a, in foods such as fruits, and then you have sugars that occurs in um, your processed foods, you have sugar that occurs in your carbohydrate type starchy foods, um, you have complex carbohydrates and you have simple carbohydrates. It's much better for you to eat the complex type of carbohydrates. And we'll get into all of that later. The complex carbs has in fiber that helps to make up the carbohydrates. And fiber moves this sugar carbohydrates through your body much slower so when you eat something carby, like even a fruit, or you drink a soda, or you eat a slice of bread, anything except like proteins, and it all depends on how the protein is prepared, if there's going to be any carbs in it, but you have proteins like your meats, and you have protein like your beans, Beans has protein and carbohydrates together. You have your fats. No, you have different types of fats. It's a lot of information, guys, but I'm just trying to break it down real simple. So when you eat a meal, you're not just eating one item or one ingredient you're not just eating one ingredient it's usually a combination of ingredients that you're eating and each of those ingredients when it enters your stomach or some in carbo in this we're talking about carbohydrates when it enters your mouth because carbohydrate breaks down it starts breaking down from in the mouth so when it enters your mouth and the salivary gland and it starts to break down into your bloodstream, it starts to make an impact on your body in the form of glucose. So this carbohydrates are sugar or glucose. When it enters your body, it just knows it as glucose, right? And when it enters your bloodstream, the vein them in your body, and the arteries them in your body. When it enters those, can remember I tell you, the blood in your body is not just a splash round, splash round like ocean. It will run through vessels, right? Blood vessels. So these blood vessels draw your nutrients in from the food that you eat. And when it enters into it, it turns into glucose. 
And that glucose is what your body needs. Your body needs it, you know. So you don't want to sit there, sit and think, oh my God, I'm not going to eat no more carbs. I'm not going to eat no more sugar, no more. Your body, especially your brain, depends on this glucose. But guess what is going on with us modern day people? Guess. Who on guess? What is the biggest problem with us with our eating nowadays in our modern days? We eating too much. We are eating more than our body requires. So when we eat and we're eating too much processed foods that our body cannot identify, it don't know what it is, my love. When we eat the processed food, and when it's something there, what they're making at the factory, our body don't know what it is. So it enters into our bloodstream. It is now in the form of um, glucose. And your body needs the glucose for energy. But because we are doing so much, it don't need all of that. Because no, none of y'all is running around all day using up this energy. So you're taking in more energy than you're using. Because that's what your body uses the food that you eat for. Energy. But you are taking in too much energy than your body needs. And so your body don't know what to do with the excess more than store it. And that's why we end up with belly fat and all these things. So your body store the excess energy. Or when it needs to go into your muscle cells, you don't even have enough muscles. So it just sits out in your bloodstream. The, the, the cells are so resistant to the glucose because they're probably full, full of fat or whatever is going on in them. So it can't take it into inside where it belongs because the glucose really belongs into our muscle cells. So it can't take it in because the cells are resisting it, right? The cells resisting it. So insulin, that other one that I told you about, is what is irresponsible for moving this glucose into your muscle cells. Boy, may I tell you, a whole heap of something, may I tell you, I don't even know if you understand. Please type down below if you understand what is going on or I need to break it down a little more. But in a nutshell, diabetes is when your body is not able to process the food that you're eating efficiently to make this energy that you need. So it's, it runs around rampant in your body and just, that's, and just start to create havoc on your organs, okay? So that's diabetes in a nutshell, that your body is not processing the foods that you're eating properly. So it runs around in your body in the form of glucose and create havoc in your body and all over your organs and cause all kind of damages. Tune in for episode number three. We're going to talk some more because it's a whole heap of something, my love. Whole heap. Please subscribe, please share, and please comment. Talk to you soon.